Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. A good day to those of you here at St. Basil's and to those of you joining us across the land. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Richmond Hill, Ontario. This Mass is offered for the souls in purgatory and for her family, that they will return to their faith. We know that this televised Mass brings meaning to the lives of thousands of Canadians across our land, and they join with me in thanking you for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Let us prepare ourselves for these mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have come to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You feed us with your body and blood to give us strength and courage. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Keep us alert, we pray, O Lord our God, as we await the advent of Christ your Son, so that when he comes and knocks, he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The vision that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. On that day, the branch of the Lord shall be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the land shall be the pride and glory of the survivors of Israel. Whoever is left in Zion and remains in Jerusalem will be called holy. Everyone who has been recorded for life in Jerusalem, once the Lord has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and cleansed the bloodstains of Jerusalem from its midst by a spirit of judgment and by a spirit of burning, then the Lord will create over the whole site of Mount Zion and over its places of assembly a cloud by day and smoke and the shining of a flaming fire by night. Indeed, over all the glory there will be a canopy. It will serve as a pavilion, a shade by day from the heat, and a refuge and a shelter from the storm and the rain. The word of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together, to it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. As was decreed for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. 
For there the thrones for judgment were set up, the thrones of the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. see your face and we shall be saved. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed in terrible distress. And Jesus said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy that you have come under my roof but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go and he goes, and to another, come and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and a slave does it. When Jesus heard him, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, truly I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and will eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. To the centurion, Jesus said, go, let it be done for you according to your faith. And the servant was healed in that hour. The gospel of the Lord. My friends, we've entered then the uh, holy season of Advent. It is a time of faith, a time of hope, and also a time of joy. We, of course, know the story of the birth of Jesus. We know the outcome. And we are in anticipation of uh, God blessing us in the birth of Christ. Jesus is, after all, not only a gift that God gives to the world, but a gift that God gives to each one of us personally. And so we have, as many would say, begun this Advent journey. It is a journey towards the feast, a journey towards the celebration of the incarnation. And as I said, it's a time of anticipation, not nervous anticipation, not anxious anticipation. Our children in our society may be anxious or even nervous about the coming of Christmas and as to what it can mean for them. But for us, and perhaps we might want to consider how we may want to enrich the understanding that our children have of this beautiful time of the year, that it means more uh, than the presents that they will receive and the lights and festivities and food that uh, we all have in abundance at this time of year. Our gospel today on this Lenten journey begins to uh, teach us, I would say, uh, a very important uh, message and uh, mystery and reality as to why Jesus came, why God gave the world the gift of the incarnation of Jesus, his son. We have a beautiful uh, encounter that Jesus has with a centurion. A centurion, of course, was not a member of the Jewish community. A centurion was on the outside, 
the centurion was with the uh, pagan world, with the Gentile world. And uh, we must take a close observation because Matthew, in Matthew's Gospel, uh, from where this passage comes from, there are uh, more recipients of the good news of Jesus Christ uh, than simply the Jewish community. This was a challenge. This was very difficult for people to, ex uh, to accept, to understand that there would be this inclusive aspect, this inclusive reality uh, to the birth of Jesus, to the coming of the Messiah. And so the uh, encounter with uh, the centurion is actually very brief. And the centurion we see is matter of fact. He is someone in authority. He explains to Jesus, he knows how it works. He knows how he gives orders to people and he knows how he is obeyed. And he knows uh, that Jesus can uh, answer his request and deal with it in a very direct manner. What is obvious is the uh, humble, the simple, humble, clear faith of the request of the centurion and of the centurion himself. Humble, simple, clear faith. God knows if we ourselves could rise to that level of humble, simple, and clear faith in the activity of God in our lives. And we must ask ourselves, because there is always serious work for us to do uh, during this period of Advent and always, we must ask ourselves our, about our own ability uh, to be embracive and to welcome and to be inclusive of others. I would say all of us may struggle at times uh, with resentment towards individuals because of their race, because of their ethnic background, because of their nationality, because of their sexual orientation, and for so many other reasons. We find it hard to be as embracive and as inclusive as Jesus was himself. And if this particular gospel passage tells us anything, it tells us how in the mind of God himself, in the person of Jesus Christ, as he was inclusive, we too are meant to be that way. Our children, of course, um, who um, are the obvious uh, attention uh, seekers, and they do receive a lot of attention during the days of Advent and Christmas, understand what it, understand also the pain of not being included. So many of our children suffer uh, from the sin of being bullied by others. The bully is only someone who excludes, and that is a great harm and a great evil that uh, human beings do to each other. And children understand what it means to be excluded, whether it's a, uh, a sports game, a football game, or a volleyball game in the gym. No one wants to be chosen last no one wants to be excluded. It is the message of Advent and the message of Jesus Christ that in the, in the heart and mind of God, no one is excluded. Everyone is chosen. And no one sits on the sidelines. The beauty of the feast of Christmas is precisely this, that the child to be born is a child that embraces everyone. The challenge, of course, and the question is, will everyone embrace Christ himself? The centurion's words, by the way, this brief encounter, this little exchange that Jesus had with the centurion, actually make or have made the Mass. They are the uh, words that we pray at the Mass at communion time as we quote the centurion and repeat his words when we say, I am, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come to me. It is of great, uh, wonderful beauty to understand that these words have become our words as we speak them to God prior to the moment of receiving Jesus Christ. And so the work of Advent continues, the journey of Advent, the journey of Advent and beyond our question that we ask ourselves is, 
Can I personally in my own life find ways to be more welcoming, more hospitable, more inclusive? Can I find ways in which I can accept and include others? And also to take a close look at ourselves and to see, am I, do I discriminate against others? Do I reject others? Do I find it difficult to take into my own sphere uh, others that I may find different from myself? And perhaps the image of the child Jesus and the teaching Christ himself may help us to alter our ways and to become, as Jesus himself was, inclusive of all. Having heard God's word in sacred scripture, let us call upon him now in prayer. Let us pray for the church throughout the world. May she always be a sign of God's love for all to see. For this we pray to the Lord. For peoples of all nations, may our actions toward others reflect our ever increasing awareness of the sacredness of life. For this we pray to the Lord. For those suffering from any form of holiday depression, may celebrating the coming of Christ's birth bring them healing. For them we pray to the Lord. For the children of our land, may they know the true meaning of Christmas and be filled with the joy that Jesus brings. For them we pray to the Lord. And for those who have completed their earthly journey, may they forever be in the company of God and the angels and saints in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, we offer these prayers of petition in the sure knowledge of your love for our sons and daughters through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. And pray now, my friends, that this hour sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Blessed is he who comes. 
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and all the apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, <coughs> we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Would those of you at home join with me in this interpretation of Psalm 130 by Father Daniel Berrigan? Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice and be attentive to my cry. If you remember my sin, who can bear it? No, your glory is your forgiveness. My soul hopes in the Lord. I take my stand on his word. More than the sleepless awaiting the dawn, my soul awaits him. As a vigiler awaits the dawn, let his friends await the Lord. For with him is grace in abundance. Out of the depths I take my stand on his word. Amen. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Our thanks to an anonymous donor from Richmond Hill, Ontario, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. Our prayer book costs $10. If you'd like to order it, just send a check or money order payable to the NCBC and mail it to the NCBC, 21 Dunlop Street, Suite 100, Richmond Hill, Ontario, l 4 c 2M6. From captivity, Israel's strength.